the Ten Commandments. What did they mean, and why were they important? Coming up next on Bibles on the Bench. Hello everybody, my name is Trevor, and welcome back to another episode of Bibles on the Bench, where we take a bunch of Bibles and we compare scriptures to scriptures. Tonight I want to talk to you about the Ten Commandments. And I have here our Gideon Bible, the American Standard Version. The Ten Commandments are very important not only to people of the Jewish faith, but also to a lot of people in Christendom. Now, I used to be a Jehovah's Witness for seven years, from 1990 to 1997, hence my name, 90 to 97 Jehovah's Witness. Anyway, um, we in the Jehovah's Witnesses never really went into any major depth of the Ten Commandments in any of the publications that we used, the Watchtower Awake magazine. Primarily, we focused on The Last Days, Armageddon, and of course, Jehovah. However, as I said before, the Ten Commandments are, again, some of these things that we never really spent a lot of time studying because the Jehovah's Witnesses figured that because they accepted Jesus Christ, that Jesus came and abolished the Ten Commandments. But is that really true? Let's take a quick look at our answers. So we begin our journey with the Gideon Bible. And like I showed you already, the Ten Commandments are listed here, right in the introduction on page 10. And it goes as follows. The Ten Commandments. You shall have no gods before me. Commandment 2. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be prolonged in the land which the Lord your God gives you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Exodus 20 verses 3 to 17, page 56, which I have marked out right here. Now, the other place that the Ten Commandments is listed is in Deuteronomy, starting in chapter 5, where, see, when ex in Exodus, the Egyptians were coming out of Egypt. The Sorry, the Jews were coming out of Egypt, led by Moses, and this is where they actually got the Ten Commandments given to them from God. In Deuteronomy, the account is a a reflection toward the end of Moses' life, where they again go over the Ten Commandments before they enter the Promised Land, which Moses never got to enter the Promised Land, as we know. Now we're going to look at the NIV Life Application Study Bible, and we're going to look at what it says in the footnotes down here, at the bottom of the page. I know that I couldn't really see that with the light, but... It says, for verse 20 and 1, the footnote, Why were the Ten Commandments necessary for God's new nation? At the foot of Mount Sinai, God showed his people the true function and beauty of his laws. The commandments were designed to lead Israel to a life of practical holiness. In them, people could see the nature of God and his plan for how they should live. The commandments and guidelines were intended to direct the community to meet the needs of each individual in a loving and responsible manner. By Jesus' time, however, most people looked at the law the wrong way, and I think they still do today, or they completely ignore it, considering it to be abolished. Um, 
Okay. They saw it as a means to prosperity in both this world and the next, and they thought that to obey every law was the way to earn God's protection from foreign invasion and natural disaster. Law-keeping became an end in itself, not the means to fulfill God's ultimate law of love. So you can see how the nation of Israel at the time actually turned the law the other way around. And in our day, I know a lot of people just don't understand these sort of laws. For example, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, these sort of things. They look at it as laws that oppress people, but they were never intended to be that. Now, I've got the New Jerusalem Bible here, and we will take and read the Ten Commandments out of Exodus from the New Jerusalem Bible. And it's interesting, it doesn't call it the Ten Commandments in here, it calls it the Decalogue. And there is a footnote down here. This is the priestly version of the Ten Commandments. Another version, the Deuteron Deuteronomic, is found in Deuteronomy 5, and it is a second which has been adopted by the Church. So, like I said, there was two, this is the first, and then the Deuteronomy account is the second. Okay, so this is what it says. Then God spoke all these words. He said, I am Yahweh your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything in heaven or on earth beneath it or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, Yahweh your God, am a jealous God, and I punish the father's fault in the sons, the grandsons, and the great-grandsons of those who hate me. But I show kindness to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not utter the, utter the name of Yahweh your God or to misuse it. And there's a footnote in B here. Either in a false or oath or irreverently. For Yahweh will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath for Yahweh your God. You shall do no work that day. Neither you, nor your sons, nor your daughters, nor your servants, men or women, nor your animals, nor the stranger who lives with you. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that these hold. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why Yahweh has blessed the Sabbath day and made it sacred. Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that Yahweh your God has given you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his servant, man or woman, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is his. And then it says, all the people shook with fear. Actually, I'll finish the account. All the people shook with fear at the peals of thunder and the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet and the smoking mountain, and they kept their distance. Speak to us yourself, they said to Moses, and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us, or we shall die. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid, God has come to test you, so that your fear of him, being always in your mind, may keep you from sinning. So the people kept their distance while Moses approached the dark cloud where God was. That was uh, when Moses was relating it on the mountain. And it actually says here, this section probably should be read after uh, 19, verse 19 of Exodus. The deca Decalogue itself is not linked to the narrative framework. But anyway, so there are the Ten Commandments in full. There's just a translation error. The 13, verse 13, thou shall not kill, or you shall not kill. They had to do animal sacrifices and that sort of thing. What this really should read is, you shall not murder, which is completely different. Now, those are the Ten Commandments, or the Decalogue, dec yes, the Decalogue, that were important. But again, as a Jehovah's Witness, we never really studied this to even 
what I'm about to do in my next 10 videos coming up. This is just an introduction to the Ten Commandments. But we never actually study these in any serious depth, and I think it is important. Now, what makes this interesting here is when you look at the NIV Life Application Study Bible, there is a column right here, and I don't know if you can see this very well, but it says Jesus and the Ten Commandments. Now, this is interesting because I have never seen this before. On one side it has the Ten Commandments, and on the other side it has what Jesus Christ said about the Ten Commandments. Okay, the Ten Commandments said in Exodus 20, verse 3, You shall have no other gods before me. Jesus said in Matthew 4 and 10, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So you see, Jesus reinforces the first of the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20 and 4, You shall not make for yourself an idol. Luke 16 and 13, Jesus says, No one can serve two masters. Exodus 20 and verse 7, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Matthew 5 and 34, what Jesus says, Do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne. And he carries on. Exodus 20 verse 8, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That's the Ten Commandments. And Jesus says at Mark 22 verse 27 and 28, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Exodus 20, verse 12, Honor your father and your mother. And Matthew 10, 37, Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. The Ten Commandments, Exodus 20 and 13, You shall not murder. Matthew 5.22 says, Anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Jesus recognizing that if people get too angry, they could commit murder. Exodus 20 and verse 15, You shall not steal. And Matthew 5 and 40 says, If someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. Exodus 20 and 16, you shall not give false testimony. And Jesus says in Matthew 12 and 36, men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. Careless word. Exodus 20 and 17, the final law, you shall not covet. And Jesus says at Luke 12 and 15, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Greed leaves, leads to coveting. Coveting can also lead to murder and other things. So, what I want to do in future videos is to cover each of the Ten Commandments one at a time so we can get a better depth and understanding. But before we do that, I have actually discovered something quite interesting about the way Jehovah's Witnesses translate parts of their Bible as opposed to other biblical translations. So just to wrap up this on the Ten Commandments, I'm going to read uh, these scriptures, and I'm going to look in the thesaurus as well as the dictionary, give you some definitions, and we will read the Jehovah's Witness Bibles. All right, to get an understanding of Jehovah's Witness translation uh, ideology here, I'll call it all ideology, we're going to take a look at Deuteronomy 5 and verse 1. And I want you to pay attention to how these are being translated. So first we start off with the American Standard Version. And it says, Then Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and ordinances which I am speaking today in your hearing, that you may learn them and observe them carefully. Then he does a recap of the law. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It gives a little backstory, and then he gets into it. Uh, the Lord spoke to you, this is in 4, face to face at the mountain from the midst of the fire. 
and verse 5, 6. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And it goes on and on, right? Okay. But this is the important part where you need to use your mind. And I know that people tuning in, you have three types of people. You have non-Jehovah's Witnesses who are trying to understand what Jehovah's Witnesses are about. Maybe you're one of them. I don't know. The second is Jehovah's Witnesses watching these videos saying that, you know, I'm an apostate or something and they're trying to catch flaws with me. And the third group of people are ex-Jehovah's Witnesses in the ex-Jehovah's Witness community. Hi, brothers and sisters. And this message actually goes to them more importantly than the other two groups. Although the other two groups are welcome to tag along. But notice it says, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the ordinances which I am speaking today in your hearing. Now, this is the American Standard Version. So, we go over and we look at the English Standard Version of the Bible. And notice how it's translated here. And Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the rules that I speak in your hearing today. All right, statutes and rules. And then here we have the Jerusalem Bible. Listen, O Israel, to the laws and customs that I proclaim in your hearing today. Laws and customs. Laws, right? And now the big, heavy uh, NIV a Life Application Bible. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. All right, so we have laws, um, ordinances, you know, this sort of thing. Now, this is the kicker. I have the both the 1984 edition of the New World Translation, otherwise known to the XJW community as the Rusty Sword, and I also have the Silver Sword, which is a 2013 edition of the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. Yes, they both are. Now, Deuteronomy. Now, this is where we get into some Jehovah's Witness speak and how they do things. Are you ready? And Moses proceeded to call all Israel and say to them, Ready? Hear, O Israel, the regulations and the judicial decisions that I am speaking in your ears today. And before I get into this a little further, silver sword, Moses then summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the regulations and the judicial decisions that I am announcing to you today. Now, for those people that are not witnesses or currently are witnesses, you think to yourself, oh, judicial decision, well, maybe that means sort of the same thing. Well, let's just take a look at this. Now, most of us know what commands and ordinances and rules are. They all mean roughly the same thing. But a, a judicial decision. Now, if any Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses have ever committed a sin and gone in front of a body of elders, you know that that is called a judicial committee. And they make a judicial decision as to your fate, whether you get disfellowshipped, reproached, or reproved, or even just a stern talking to. It becomes a judicial decision. And you notice that the New World Translation changes the meaning of what Moses is saying to having Moses saying, J.W. speak of judicial decision. So I have a dictionary right here, a very old falling apart one, which is very much like most of the stuff in my house. <laughs> However, judicial. One, of judges, courts, or their functions. Two, allowed, enforced, etc. by a court. Three, befitting a judge. 
and four is fair and impartial. But you notice that this is a, a judicial. So it's judges. Who would be judging? It's people, not necessarily God. And then we get into a decision. Um, decide. Uh, judicial decision to end a contest dispute, etc., by giving one side the victory, to reach a decision about a resolve, to reach a decision. So you have a, a judicial decision, a court, a human court, deciding by giving one side the victory, that is a judicial decision. Actually, here is the, actually, that would be a judicial decide. Here is decision down here, further down the page. The act of deciding or settling a dispute or question. The act of making up one's mind, a judgment or conclusion. Determination, firmness of mind. So what happens here? when you translate this differently. Hear, O Israel, the regulations and the uh, judicial uh, the judicial decision, the courts the act of deciding the court's way to settle this dispute. Okay, here, O Israel, the regulations and the court's way of settling this dispute that I am announcing to you today, and you must learn them and carefully observe them. See, it it changes this kind of meaning that they are trying to establish here and turns it into Jehovah's Witness speak. And here... Um, statutes I also marked here. A statute is an established rule or law, a law passed by a legislative body. But in the case of the law, it is from God. And then I looked at the thesaurus here, which is another book of mine that's very old and falling apart. However, judicial, forensic, judiciary, Juridic Court of Law. So it's interesting how the Jehovah's Witnesses have retranslated the ordinances, the, the rules, that terminology into a judicial decision, which is what the Jehovah's Witnesses elders do. So that's a little keynote for you Jehovah's Witnesses and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses that your Bible has been translated into elder speak. Now here's one last interesting thing just before we go. Also in the NIV Life Application Study Bible, if you look at... Now remember I showed you a column before and we read through it quickly about Jesus and the Ten Commandments and what Jesus said to do to still carry on with the Ten Commandments and to think about them and to reflect them in your heart instead of trying to use them as your way to buy yourself into heaven or whatever they were doing with them toward the end. But notice this, it has broken commandments. The Ten Commandments were God's standard for right living. To obey them was to obey God. Yet throughout the Old Testament, we can see how each commandment was broken. As you read the stories, notice the tragic consequences that occurred as a result of violating God's law. The Ten Commandments. Number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Notable violations. Solomon in 1 Kings 11. As we know, Solomon built the temple and he asked God for wisdom. And God liked that because no one had asked anyone, had never asked God for godly wisdom until Solomon came along 
And then Solomon somehow slips out of his wits and gets tempted and marries many wives who worship many false gods. And then Solomon falls in and starts worshiping those false gods. Uh, next, you shall not make for, make for yourself an idol. And then right away, the golden calf incident at Exodus 32. Genera generations after... The, okay, sorry. The golden calf incident. The, the, everything, there's no spaces in between here. So, You shall not bow down to them or worship them. Exodus 32, generations after Joshua. Judges 2, 10 to 14. 2 Kings 21, 1 to 15. And Jeremiah 1, verse 16. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord. Zedekiah in Ezekiel 17, 15 to 21. Uh, observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Judah, Second Chronicles 36 and 21. Honor your father and your mother. Eli's sons, Hophni and Phinehas in 1 Samuel 2, 12, 23 to 25. You shall not murder. H Haziel, Second Kings 8 and 15. Murdered, murderer. Thou shall not commit adultery. David. 2 Samuel 11, 2 and 5. You shall not steal. Ahab, 1 Kings 21, 1 to 19. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. Saul did that in 1 Samuel 15, 13 to 25. And you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And Ashan in Joshua 7 19 to 26 did exactly that. He coveted, and that's how that went. So, very interesting that you have the broken commandments, which, of course, again, as a Jehovah's Witness, they never went into depth with these sort of things as to who broke what and what they did. So, again, always read multiple versions of your Bibles, check the facts, and until next time, Keep reading the Bibles, and may God be with you.